One interesting way to modify your squats is by adding chain load. So I don't have any equipment here, so we're gonna kinda use our, our visualization tools right now. So picture that I got a bar on my back, right? So the weight is just straight weight, right? It doesn't change at all. As if I have 200 pounds on the bar, I have 200 pounds here, I have 200 pounds here, I have 200 pounds here, I have 200 pounds if I miss the lift, everything, right? <clears throat> With a chain, it might be easier to kind of illustrate this. Let's, let's picture that we have a bunch of books. And now one book isn't very heavy, but 400 books is very, very heavy. If you've ever moved a box of books, that can be very difficult and it can cost a lot to ship them because they're so heavy, right? Chains are a lot like a bunch of books. So if I have a chain, I have one link of the chain, right? One little circle link thingy. That one link doesn't weigh that much, but when I combine them and I have 25, 30, 40 links in a given chain, then we accumulate a lot of load. So general chain weight is about 20 pounds per chain. If I do math, you could probably figure out how much that is for a link, but it's less than a pound per link, right? The reason this is important is because I can modify your squat, make it heavier at the top by adding chain weight, but the real benefit comes from making it lighter at the bottom. And now how does that happen? So when the chain hits the ground, the ground is supporting, the ground is now holding up that chain weight. So I don't feel it on the bar. That way, when I squat down, it's lighter here and it's heavier here. Why is that important? Well, there's, there's two major reasons. One, I have pretty good mechanical advantage up here at the top and I can support the extra loading. And let's say there's three reasons. I'm making this up on the fly, right? Um, so I have good mechanical advantage at the top. Number two, having that extra load tells my body, let's get ready, we're about to go. Okay, so if I'm supporting 300 pounds at the top, but then 200 pounds at the bottom, my nervous system is ready for 300 pounds and it can trick me into moving faster with the 200, right? I can come down and I just boing up. So good mechanical advantage. We have this accelerative component and that's, that's kind of like point three, right? So if I use two, I can, and point two, I am activating more neurons, I'm getting the body going, but point three is that if it's lighter at the bottom where I have less mechanical advantage, I can use that to my training advantage. I can move quicker through lighter loads and then continue to accelerate through this rep. So as the, as the chains come off the ground, the weight gets heavier and that slows me down. If we look at how a, a lift happens, right? Most of the lift or a significant portion of the lift is me actually slowing myself down at the top so that I can come up here instead of like this and jarring myself, right? Though chain weight can do that for you. And so you can accelerate, you can have this purposeful push throughout the entire rep. So let's recap. So three major reasons that I might wanna use chains. I can load my mechanically advantaged and unload my mechanically disadvantaged positions. I can post activation potentiation. I can turn on some muscles. I can turn on some nerves. I can increase the neural drive by overloading these efficient top portions and then commencing into a rep. And then three, I can teach my body to accelerate through a load, produce more force and therefore more power.